you know, giving me a chance. And mm -hmm. it's crazy because when you see them, like we just did the award show. I see oh, them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Singer-songwriter here in the Macon uh, area, uh, but I guess you're uh, you're more of a transplant, huh? <laughs> Ooh, when you caught me off guard, I'm sorry. I was on that. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard was transplant, uh -huh. and that kind of sound like replacing something. So I don't know. What no, no, no. Somebody who's not who wasn't born here, who just yeah. live here. I'm everywhere. You everywhere? I'm everywhere. I ain't, this ain't my last stop right here either. <laughs> so tell us about uh, like your background in you know singing and stuff like that, and what made you want to like jump out there and pursue music. Okay. Um, well, I always knew that I could sing. Mm -hmm. um, my mom used to tell me before I was talking, I was humming songs like, and um, it just. It was so natural to the point where everybody would have me singing everywhere I go, mm -hmm. and my dad could sing really good, and it kind of motivated me to sing, but it didn't put me there. Mm -hmm. um, I would say what really motivated me to just go ahead and go for it was one time I did karaoke at Billy's, mm -hmm. and it sounded so good. And everyone in the crowd, they was like, oh, why are you here? You don't need to be here. Yeah. So I cried, of course, I always cry. And it, it made me just say, they actually like me. Mm -hmm. You know, my anxiety got to me. I always felt like, what would I say? Would they even like what I say? Would they like my music? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I kind of pushed it to the side and just thought about what could I do as far as if I didn't make it. Mm -hmm. I already had it in my head, kind of like I wasn't going to make it, so that was holding me back. Mm -hmm. But that time at Billy's Child, it just, it took me there. I always, you know, been moving around. My mom always had us moving around. So, you know, we never really just stayed in one spot mm -hmm. for me to be comfortable with the people around me, to mm -hmm. try to have that friendships and stuff like that where they can help motivate me to you know so I kind of turned into like an introvert mm -hmm. a little bit but it's so crazy because I'm nowhere near an introvert mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I was just hiding you yeah. know hiding afraid of what people might think you know so um, oh I went back and found the original email you had sent me an email two years ago Two years ago. Mm -hmm. I told you I knew you. Oh, you sent me an email two years you. ago about saying that I'm a singer and making, songwriter, and you sent like a picture. 
Um, he had some other lines in email, and then I replied back and said, "Have you? Uh, do you have anything that's uh, mastered yet?" And, and I'm sure was, my answer was no. Well, that was the end of the email. There was oh, no wow. more correspondence. <laughs> but when I came across, uh, there was two things. One, I saw the thing that Ponce put together, and you performed there mm -hmm. um, under like the lights and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then the other thing was uh, there was something else that I ran across where you was performing. And that's when I reached out or whatever and said, hey, you know, um, I wanted to talk to you and stuff. Um, one thing and that. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I really uh, did like uh, that I saw was the. Uh, the uh, the mic'd up. That you did with BP. Um, Shout out to BP. Has that uh, love you, boy. Caribbean flair to it. That's or exactly Island. the goal. And that's exactly the goal. That song, like me personally, I think that song should be pushed more. Um, because I think it, it, you got something there. You really do got something there, and it should be like you know a lot of other people should be hearing, it, especially it's like about. the geographical uh, area. Um, and then I saw a video that you did. Um. Something about somebody cheating or whatever. Bullshit. Yeah, that's it. Um, and I thought that was pretty dope. Um, no, no, I watched the whole video. It was like, okay, so the the dude at the end, okay, I didn't expect <laughs> that part, but cool. Um, so it shows like versatility mm -hmm. with me, going from uh, one song to the next. So do you uh, purposely like? When you record or even when you're in the process of creating do you just let whatever you're doing at the time inspire you or are you trying to like show that you're you know well-rounded it's not really that i'm trying to show that i'm well-rounded it's just i'm always all over the place that's mm -hmm. one of my biggest problems mm -hmm. um i'm having a hard time finding what is my actual genre? Because I like to say that I'm R&B. Mm -hmm. However, I do all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, oh snap, am I really R&B? Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm just all over the place. So I just drop my music from the heart. Mm -hmm. And if it sound different, it's like, okay, so she could do more. But it wasn't the goal to show y'all that mm -hmm. I can do anything because I'm still scared to try some stuff, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but um, with the Caribbean style, I think what motivated me to do that one was, um, mm -hmm. so um, it seemed like the Caribbean stuff was going up during the summertime of this year. Everybody mm -hmm. was listening to, you know, sounds like that and they were getting more into the dances that, mm -hmm. you know, they do and like... I was like, well, I want to I wanna give the people something like that. Yeah. So then I came, I listened to my girl Rihanna for a while. Shout out to you because she most definitely inspired me to do Bum Bum. Mm -hmm. um, when I did it, it was almost uh, going to be dull. But my guy Tastic, mm -hmm. he's a really great guy. He sat in the studio with me and Hitman while we were laying it down. And he was like, it's missing and next thing you know he was like go a little higher make it a three-part harmony mm -hmm. and then it turned into like mm -hmm. a masterpiece mm -hmm. so I I don't know I just I stay all over the place okay. my next song might mm -hmm. just be a pop song I don't know <laughs> well, I'm you all know, over the place I, I think is you know Indie artists, y'all are, uh, your first couple of years you go through that era of trying to find what's yourself. your sound and yeah. what's yourself, exactly. Um, and then you get comfortable of like, you know, what works for you and what's in your lane. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's great to like, you know, do other things to show how versatile you are. Um, but if you're like, you know, all over the place, all over the time for the duration of the career, then, you know, you can't really build a solid one or whatever mm -hmm. because the consumers won't know what to expect of you. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, what's your favorite part so far about like, you know, being an artist as far as like, do you like to perform more, write or record? Hands down. I love performing more than anything. Now, 
I love writing and I love being in the studio. All mm -hmm. of that just, it gets me there. But it's something about when the crowd is reactive mm -hmm. and they're just like, yes, mm -hmm. you know, that mm -hmm. is everything for me. Yeah. And it's like, it overpowers everything else. Okay. Um, what's something that you don't like about the industry thus far? Everything has been going wrong. <laughs> not everything. I'm like, you're here. That's I'm not here, wrong. So not everything. What I don't like about the industry is um, <laughs> it's so much more things not working out than it is things working out mm -hmm. and it's like you really have to really want this mm -hmm. because it's so much that will make you just want to give up mm -hmm. and i've never gotten to the point yet where I, well i'm not gonna say yet because i'll mm -hmm. never get there mm -hmm. i never got to the point where i felt like i'm just gonna give it all away once i started last year mm -hmm. it's on and popping forever mm -hmm. but um promoters um people doing showcases, um, selling dreams, people coming to making, selling dreams. Mm -hmm. um, at one point I found myself winning the making um, showcase. It was at the Making Art Center. It was a lot of people that performed, they did their thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was not one person that sleep me. So um, that was just, a bunch of mess <laughs> it almost seemed as if you know these people are just playing on us because they know that we really want this so they're mm -hmm. gonna say well you gotta pay this to get on our stage mm -hmm. knowing us we really want to be seen we want to mm -hmm. be heard we're gonna do that you know yeah. they promise us this prize they promise us that mm -hmm. we don't go deliver. there we do it we just paid to sing in front of somebody at this point because nothing falls through, you know? Yeah. So that's the worst part about it. And then people taking your money and running with it, it's, it's, it's been more bad than good for me. Yeah, and I can say that, you know, I understand where you're coming from with that because even when I was doing stuff as an active rapper, um, like I would pay to do different things or whatever, and like I saw it for what it was. I'm like, to me, it's a business, um, but... I get to come from the background of business, so I know what business looks like. Right. Creatives don't get to really understand what business looks like until they're burnt. You know what right. I'm saying? They start learning those lessons. Right. Um, like I can, I can spot stuff now. I can spot fraud stuff from like a mile away. Child, so. <laughs> Speaking of fraud stuff, I mean, I, uh -huh. I've been kind of silent about it. And mm -hmm. I haven't really voiced it, mm -hmm. but my very first song that was out on all platforms mm -hmm. had, I, I like to say that it's been stolen from me. However, I don't think it was their intentions to mm -hmm. do me dirty, mm -hmm. but it should have never been published in anyone else's name but mine. Mm, gotcha. My name isn't even on the song. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it's like, do you just let bullshit go? Mm -hmm. Or do you fight to get your song back? Because I know I can always get my lyrics copyrighted, mm -hmm. you know, and get credit for that. However, it's just like, is it worth the fight, you know? And that's and, what you have to, like, wait, though. And you, you mentioned know. how Bum Bum is is something that I need to push. And honestly, I mm -hmm. feel like Bum Bum is more of a hit than bullshit. Mm -hmm. So it's like, at this point, what do we do with bullshit? Do we just forget about it and throw it away? Or do we mm -hmm. still fight for it and just hold it until, I don't know, it's hard. That's a, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a decision, you know, something you'll have to make or whatever. Yeah. And But um, I can't say that, you know, You'll create more because you're the creator, right? You'll go through situations and you'll create and you'll learn from lessons like this and be able to execute better in the future. So it'll make up for anything that is lost. It's unfortunate that, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that happens. It happens all the time. And it doesn't just happen to like, you know what I'm saying, indie artists, it happens to major recording artists. Mm -hmm. All the time is, you know, people's integrity 
And it's not just the music industry though, or entertainment. It's with anything that you do in life. Um, you'll have people who want to mimic what you're doing and they'll probably get like, you know, more recognition or clout or whatever, even though you were like one of the first people to do something. Right. Um, and you'll have other people always trying to, you know, take ideas and stuff and run with them because they have the resources to push them and stuff. Um, actually, I just found out through uh, watching like a TikTok with uh, the the guy Adam who used to do that TV show um, where he talk about uh, different truths and stuff. The white guy with the glasses, or whatever. He has like the little funny swirple hair. Um, but anyway, apparently uh, Tesla wasn't founded by Elon or whatever. He took it from somebody else and basically ran with it. Wow. So I'm like, you know, people have their own narratives and when they have the resources to do stuff like that, I'm like, they do it. Um, we can't expect everyone to have the same amount of integrity. So that's why we have to protect ourselves as creators and individuals and stuff. So we get what's due to us, but I'm like, it happens all the time. It's, it's, it's a sad. dirty game. It's a dirty it game. It is, but it's not but just I'm a dirty. dance with the devil all day long. <laughs> dance with the devil. I'm ready. <laughs> and it's so crazy that mm -hmm. it's like you have to go through it stuff just mm -hmm. to know it's like experience is the best teacher and okay. i hate mm -hmm. that i have to be kicked down first i wish mm -hmm. i could just be taught mm -hmm. first and then choose for myself mm -hmm. you know okay i know this is a great way to do it and i know mm -hmm. this is an iffy way but it's it's like you know you have to just live it you know mm -hmm. it's crazy to me it's crazy to me i can say one thing at least you experience the dirtiness of the in game the beginning, in the beginning. Yeah, hello. Because there are people out there who experience it when they achieve a huge amount of Ashanti. success. Uh huh. Ashanti. And they don't get what's due to them and they have to rebuild. And even rebuilding, even at that level, whatever, can be very mentally draining and detrimental to your character and really weigh on you. So. I'm like, at least you got that going for you. Blessed you and learned favor to get it already. Smack in the first beginning. You exactly. Know? As you keep building. So, um, as an artist, are you setting goals and stuff for your career? Or Yes, I am. Okay. And I set long-term goals and mm. I set short-term goals. Mm. So, I know the ultimate goal is to finally be that huge star mm -hmm. all around the world, mm -hmm. just like Beyonce, if not better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my short-term goals, that's when it get realistic. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, within a month, you need to have these many songs recorded and copyrighted, you mm -hmm. know. Within this time frame, you need to already be having the whole dialogue for a video. Mm -hmm. You need to know which song you're going to do the video for. Mm -hmm. You know, like right now, I have a goal for next year in um, January. Oh, Lord, I'm spilling the beans, but... <laughs> In January, uh -huh. um, I have this set date where I need to have all of the songs that I'm going to have for this new album. I'm okay. going to drop my very first album okay. in January. So, I, at the beginning of January, I need to already have all the songs mm -hmm. that I want. They need to be mixed and mastered. Yeah. You know? And then at the end of January, it's time to drop it. Yeah, and then push it. But it comes with a lot of other things. It comes with a lot of stress because mm -hmm. there goes the album release parties. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the a politicking lot. politicking and, you know, politicking. building up relationships with a lot of different entities Promotions. and all that stuff. Uh -huh. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. But I'm willing to take that. So do you look at the industry different now that you're participating in it as opposed to when you were just a consumer of it? Yeah, because I learned some stuff. So I would say um, I definitely learned that even people that make super great music can be such terrible individuals. Mm -hmm. I've learned that. 
And, you know, from the beginning when I was just looking at it and I wasn't doing it, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, my God, they're so awesome. Everything about them is awesome. But when you actually get in it and you have to work with other artists and you know how great those artists are, but the relationship that you have with them is so crazy. It's like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Why do your music sound this good if you're like this? What's mm -hmm. wrong with you? Nobody's a talent. You know, I'm, I'm so <laughs> mad about this. You have baffled me. Uh -huh. I was so in love with your music for mm -hmm. you to turn out to be such a bad person. Mm -hmm. you know, I get so it. you know I look at it like that everybody is human so and then also I have my guard up now mm -hmm. I'm because of what transpired last year with my song and doing shows having money stolen from me and you know now it's like I have this guard up and everybody has to work a little harder mm -hmm. to get my attention now mm -hmm. and I have people, you know, they tell me I think I'm Beyonce or I think I'm just, you know, like, but in all actuality, I do. And I'm going to continue to be that way because mm -hmm. in the end, you will respect it. No, no, I, de I definitely get that. And I understand even coming from your viewpoint of being a singer and then being a woman and then being a black woman. I'm like, you got like all these things that you have to go through that's way more. Uh, I talked to a lot of female black singers um, and even the y'all's counterparts, the white singers and you know, non you know, colored singers or whatever, um, they don't have to go through as, they still go through stuff, but there's not as much. It's like, yeah, I got that extra amount you got to push through or whatever, right. just to like almost fight for like the same spots, which I think is mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, because we can uphold a lot of different artists at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like I saw it throughout the 90s or whatever, just being a consumer. You had all different regions really popping at one particular time. You know, and no matter who dropped or whatever, people flocking or whatever is important. So I'm like, you can still do that now. Um, so as you, you know what I'm saying, decided to do this journey and you have your inner circle, like family, friends, whomever, and you express your desire to do this as a profession, what was their thoughts about it what did they have reservations or were they supportive um okay let's be real mm -hmm. i've been out here by myself okay <laughs> when it come down to telling them about yeah. it they're like oh i'm so happy for you congratulations mm -hmm. that's the support that i get okay. when it comes down to can you come to this show it's free mm -hmm. And I, I hit you up a month or two in advance, and you know, it, I don't even hang around people like that, let's be clear. So mm -hmm. maybe I am a part of the problem, why, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I don't have that much support because mm -hmm. I don't really talk to people like that. Like, mm -hmm. I have my two best friends, they are mm -hmm. very supportive, they come to shows, mm -hmm. they do all of that. So There's nothing wrong with like you changing your circle because you're chasing your dream. Right. I actually tell people to do that. Right. Now, yes. Everybody can go. Yeah, everybody can, you know what I'm saying, go or whatever. And what you'll learn is the higher you climb in popularity, notoriety, fame, fortune, and all that, then people start to gravitate towards you or whatever. And then you all have to have mechanisms in place to be able to control that. And so that doesn't weigh on you or whatever. Because some people will come, you know, with when their head. When the Uh huh, exactly. Um, but in order to get to where you got to go, you have to be singularly focused. And have just the people who are supporting you telling you, yes, keep going, keep right. moving, we're going to show up, we're going to keep cheerleading you. Right. Because you won't get to that destination um, when you have too many people that's around you and all you hear is, well, I don't think you should be doing that, you should be doing something else. Your life is your life. Right. And you're supposed to live in your purpose and not someone else's purpose for you. Right. So I tell people, go out there and chase your dreams. Do it strategically, but do it. Don't allow dream killers to get in your circle. Right. Because they'll stop you. And I've seen too many people with talent throw it away because they didn't, in their corner or whatever, when they go back home or when they lay down their pillow or whatever, and the people who are nearest to them are basically like, no, don't do that. Don't do that. That doesn't make sense. Right. And I'm like, the blueprint is there. Success is there. Success is there if you want it. You just have to want it. They didn't want whatever the successes was there for them. Right. So then they settled 
And that's I think that's what a lot of people do. They project onto you their insecurities. And I'm always telling people, people call me all the time, ideas and stuff like that. Like, do it. The only thing you can do is just try it. Right. And if it doesn't meet the goal that you have, then do it again and learn from that. But the only failure is not trying. Right. Failure isn't like going and doing a show and... And it know, don't work out. It, exactly. Everybody boo you. Yeah. yeah. Failure is not failure. getting on that stage. Exactly. That's you know what, what I'm failure, saying? That's what failure so, is. Not getting on that stage. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it starts with you. Mm -hmm. And yes. the only thing that has been keeping me going with not really having a support system and not having anyone to come to the shows or, you know, stuff like that, is the fact that I know that I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. And I know that eventually when, like we was just talking about the bandwagon, mm -hmm. when everyone else starts to notice me and give me more attention, it's going to be those very same people that I used to always reach out to. Mm -hmm. Like, let's go do this. I got this going on. Come with me. I got that going on. They don't want to hop in on that. Or like how they do me now on Facebook, they act like, Oh, I always told her she just mm -hmm. needed to go for it. Mm -hmm. I always been her friend. Yeah. This is my sister. Yeah. And child, I ain't finna say nothing to them. They can do it. Mm -hmm. All publicity <laughs> is good publicity. Yeah, I tell Even people Facebook not real. <laughs> Even though you know we don't talk at uh -huh. all. You can still go tell everybody, mm -hmm. I love the way LaVey sing. I mm -hmm. knew LaVey because you still speaking of mm -hmm. LaVey. You yeah. know, so have it, honey. Create your own little fairy tale if you want. Okay, that's what's up. Um, do you feel um, darker tone women are represented like they should be in the industry? I feel like any tone of woman should be in the industry. I feel like women, period, can give off all of that, you know, what the men want. And it really just depends on their preference mm -hmm. you know but i feel like anybody can do it i'm a nice piece of chocolate baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the world is not ready for the baby <laughs> i'm telling you now the world is not ready for this and mm -hmm. I, i'm to the point where i love my beautiful chocolate skin and i'm mm -hmm. so happy we're on this conversation because mm -hmm. All my life growing up, my mom always called me ugly, little boy, mm -hmm. you know, all kinds of little nicknames that were hurtful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I voiced to her so many times on how it makes me feel. And, you know, it was always like, a, well, you know, I was just playing with you or mm -hmm. but when I grew up on that, mm -hmm. yeah, it to me, it affected me. Mm -hmm. And I used to have problems with, you know, I used to feel like I wasn't pretty enough mm -hmm. because I was dark skinned mm -hmm. and my sisters and my mom is light skinned. I used to feel mm -hmm. like, you know, if the boys be looking all googly eyes, they're going to mm -hmm. look at my sister first. Mm -hmm. You know, I and then I always never tried to pursue anybody because of that. Sometimes I wait for them to come to me because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm pushing myself on somebody that don't want me, but it came from me being insecure, mm -hmm. automatically thinking they're not going to want me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And really, ain't nothing wrong with me. No. no I had uncles that told me all my life, you're a beautiful black queen. You beautiful. Mm -hmm. You're chocolate. Black beauty. That's your new name. Black beauty. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it wasn't for my uncles, mm -hmm. you know, and my sisters, I would, I would, I don't think I would be the same person. That's right now, I'm confident. Yeah. Then. This. Mm. Oh, hey, yeah. everyone. I just wanted to ask you about. Uh, what were you watching? I'll go ahead and show Yeah, you. yeah, uh -huh, I'm pulled up. You know, just. Really? Just the sexiness right here, you know. We talked about this. You're supposed to be taking a break. I know, but I can't, I can't help myself. You you see how how yeah, beautiful that is? I, I, I do, but So much variety. Yes. So just, just so sexy and so. Ooh, I just, just want it all the time. But you know what else is sexy? What? Solitaire. Being more oh. productive. Let's go play some frisbee, actually. 
you said it was uncles and stuff. When did you finally like, you know, embraced your beauty and your skin tone and all that? Like at what point were you like, you know, is that when you really like started putting yourself out there that you took on that confidence more? It happened after a breakup. Uh -huh. It happened after a breakup. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I can, see, I can see a breakup as a catalyst though for that. It happened after a breakup. Um, I felt like there's no more hiding. There's no more feeling bad. Mm -hmm. I'm finna find everything that's gonna make me feel good. Mm -hmm. So I started getting my hair done. I started mm -hmm. getting my nails done. I mm -hmm. started wearing cute clothes that I wanted and stuff. And y'all, mm -hmm. y'all can't tell me nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can't right. tell me I'm sorry. No, I'm no, you did. Man, this this platform, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so um, are there uh, any um, artists and okay, so have you done many collaborations yet? And are there artists around here and abroad that you would like to collaborate with? Yes. Um, however, mm -hmm. a lot of people ignore me, so it's hard to mm -hmm. try to support them mm -hmm. when they just look at your message and keep going or mm -hmm. just don't look at your message at all mm -hmm. because you know people can still read your message through their notification bar mm -hmm. they just don't have to click in it mm -hmm. you know and they can also mark it unread if they did read it or whatever mm -hmm. but it's just like my main problem right now is the people that I have been given a chance they mm -hmm. haven't really been, you know, giving me a chance. And mm -hmm. it's crazy because when you see them, like, we just did the award show. I've seen mm -hmm. a lot of people network with a lot of people. And to me, it seemed like we need to work. We need to do something. But here I am in the studio inboxing people. I want you on this song. Mm -hmm. And I can't get a response, you know, or... Mm -hmm. You, you just won't acknowledge me and it mm -hmm. kind of make me feel some type of way because I'm very emotional and mm -hmm. all I want is for people to know that this is my passion and if I find something really great in you, mm -hmm. I want you to help me and I want to collab with you, you know, yeah. but it is, it, yeah, they got a girl feeling alone out here, but um, I've done a few collaborations mm -hmm. and I'm so proud of that. Um, it's some people that I do want to collaborate with. Now, um, it is some people that I haven't reached out to mm -hmm. that I would like to collaborate with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like I just need to get where I need to be first before I start bringing people on. Like, mm -hmm. my main concern is not collabing right now. Mm -hmm. My main concern is for them to hear LeVay, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Not to be funny business or nothing. No, no, no I get it. You're building yourself like four, and establishing it. You know, yeah. you have like four out of about 70 songs. I have four collabs, so. Okay, that's what's up. I, I, I was trying. ready to uh, hear this music. Um, okay, so uh, for that and everything, um, let people know where can they go to uh, follow, um, you know, inquire if they would do want to collab in the future, things of the nature, and how they can support. If they don't think I'm damn crazy. Um, <laughs> Y'all can follow me at L-E capital V-A-E on all social media platforms. That includes Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. You can find LaVey by searching Leve, mm -hmm. and if you want to book or you know if you want to do collaborations you can always hit me up at boltonjanae at mm -hmm. gmail.com i have it posted on all of my social media platforms as well so if you're one of the ones that don't like to do too much work child just find me on facebook or something and my email gonna be right there for you to click into okay Thank y'all. So there y'all have it. Y'all going. Y'all support Leve, and I'll definitely have some of her music playing um, as well. So, like I said, check her out. I like her voice and everything. So. Thank you. No, no, no. I'm like, man, I wouldn't interview if I didn't like it. Hey. Um, so, <laughs> y'all make sure y'all support. And as always, if you have not, go ahead and download the Bank Radio Show app, and also if you're viewing this on Facebook, send those stars.